All right, it is one of the greatest mysteries in medicine. How do we make memories? More importantly, maybe, why do we lose them? Researchers at Cedar sinai are now attempting to get a better handle with help from patients being treated for epilepsy. Hi, Margaret, it's Jeff. Well, hello, Jeff. It was an impromptu phone visit with a hospitalized patient. I've been admitted. A chance to get acquainted with a viewer from Ontario. I still have one parent living, that's my dad. He's 96 years old. Oh, wow. While we chatted, data was being collected, all for the benefit of a landmark brain study. Touch my finger, touch your nose, go back and forth. Good. She's really trying to help me. Dr. Crystal Reed is a neurologist at Cedar sinai Medical Center. So it's already started. Margaret Terrell suffers with a severe form of epilepsy that causes debilitating seizures. <laughs> okay, Margaret. Okay, okay. Margaret has had electrodes implanted in her brain with wires connected to computers. There are also cameras in her room. The goal, collect as much data as possible from the inside and out. We got one more seizure. Let's look on the EG. The more you capture, the more you understand. While Dr. Reed works to help Margaret with her seizures, Dr. Yuli Rudishauser is studying another set of data from those same electrodes. We are now going to uh, start up the experiment. I study how the human brain makes memories. Can you see this okay? Yes. Because she has electrodes in the brain, and that gives us an opportunity to ask her to help us understand uh, how memory works by working with us while she's here waiting for seizures. I gave you a word to remember, Margaret. Do you remember the word? No. Okay. Doctors have discovered that each of our memories occupy its own set of cells in our brain. These monitors tell doctors which neurons are firing and what triggers it. The relationship between memories and neurons is that eventually all your memories reside in neurons, and we want to try to find out how does that work? While Dr. Rudishauser gathers his data in hopes of one day untangling memory disorders, he's already made one discovery in Margaret that involves Dr. Reed. And we indeed found one neuron. And it only fires when she sees a picture of me. Doctors have named it the Crystal Reed Neuron. The neuron is active. I think it just shows the bond between a physician and a patient. Could I have naming rights to one of Margaret's brain cells too? While we chatted, this was captured, a different neuron firing repeatedly. When Margaret was later asked, she recalled this about my dad. It said that he was in his 90s. <laughs> that to me is, that's old. <laughs> Uh, as researchers now pour over her memory data, Margaret is home. Hi, Margaret. She's getting used to life with less medication. That study located her troubled brain tissue, and it is now being treated with electric stimulation. So far, Margaret tells us, so good. Wow, that could be a real breakthrough. Just in, really in terms, could. you think in terms of dementia, Alzheimer's? I'm thinking. Of yeah, as long as they now now that they can isolate that it all exists in neurons, yes. they know where to go. The Jeff Michael neuron. No. Wow. Not even close. She has a better memory than I do. <laughs> uh,